The Malfoys are the family we love to hate. From the start, they were cruel, prejudiced, and arrogant. But in the end, everything changed. Narcissa and Draco did really deserve credit for their redemption. They showed everyone their true allegiance, and that they both still got some compassion inside. In today's video, I'll be defending Draco and Narcissa, showing that despite being a bad person, it's never too late to change. Narcissa Malfoy certainly wasn't a bad person. She fell in with a bad crowd. She was cold and not afraid to be cruel. But her love for Draco was very much her saving grace and the thing that saved Harry from Voldemort in the Forbidden Forest. Narcissa was a Malfoy through and through. Born into a pure blood line, it's clear that Narcissa was brought up to believe in magic over muggles. Like her husband Lucius, she clearly believed a muggle-born wizard were below pure blood once, even disowning her sister Andromeda for marrying one. Narcissa was a part of Voldemort's group during the Dark Lord's final months, although she was never officially a Death Eater. Nonetheless, she certainly followed in Lucius' footsteps. When it came to Harry, she ultimately held him and his friends responsible for her husband's capture and imprisonment. In fact, Narcissa disliked Harry, Ron and Hermione so much that when they met in Madame Malkin's, she called him scum and threatened Harry with being reunited with their Sirius following his death in the Ministry of Magic. Narcissa seems an endearing character so so far. However, it became very obvious throughout the story that Narcissa's true allegiance was to her family, especially her son, even if it meant the fine Lord Voldemort. Narcissa may have been part of Voldemort's inner circle, but only by default. Her husband, sister, and brother-in-law were all Death Eaters, as was her cousin Regulus Black. But as far as we know, she never took the Dark Mark herself. She was one of the quiet supporters of the Dark Lord, always by Lucius' side, yet rarely in the middle of the action. In fact, she showed on more than one occasion that she would happily betray Voldemort to save Draco. With Lucius locked up in Azkaban and the Malfoy name fallen from grace, Draco was given an important mission by Voldemort to kill Albus Dumbledore. Narcissa knew full well that his honor had not been given to Draco as a reward, but rather as a punishment for his father's failure. Narcissa transformed from Ice Queen to panicked, protective mother. When Draco was threatened, she became ruthless, desperate, and determined to do anything to save her son. Fortunately for Narcissa, when she and Bellatrix arrived at Spinner's End, it transpired that Severus Snape was fully aware of the plan and was willing to aid Draco on his mission. Bellatrix couldn't understand her sister devastating at Voldemort's instructions. In her mind, it was a great honor if she had sons. She claimed she would have been glad to sacrifice them to the Dark Lord's will. Narcissa pleaded with Snape, the most emotion we ever saw her display, to make an unbreakable vow with her, thus ensuring Draco's safety. Narcissa's greatest moment, however, was when she chose to betray Voldemort in Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. Not knowing whether Draco was alive or dead, Narcissa chose to lie to the Dark Lord rather than risk losing her son. When Voldemort asked her to check if Harry was dead, and she realized he was. Narcissa took her opportunity. Harry revealed that Draco was still very much alive, and she lied to her master in order to get closer to him. Narcissa may have concealed the truth from Voldemort to save her son, but she helped Harry to victory in doing so. It might seem that the Malfoy family would have been honored when Voldemort chose their manor as his headquarters, but neither Narcissa nor Lucius seemed very happy about it, especially when Voldemort asked Lucius to hand over his wand as well. Narcissa may have been many things. She was cruel and distant and happy to watch her family return to Lord Voldemort's side as he rose again. But she was also self-sacrificing. She loved her son and her husband and she thought nothing of putting herself in danger to protect them. Most of Narcissa's actions can be traced to her desire to protect her family at all costs. How different were Narcissa Malfoy to Molly Weasley or Lily Potter? In the end, she put love first. Although she wasn't an obvious hero, she did the right thing in the moment that mattered the most. Moving now to Draco. In Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, Dumbledore tells Harry, it's our choices that reveal what we truly are. In other words, it's not the thing that happen, but what we choose to do about them that defines us. Unfortunately, Lucius Malfoy happened to have some pretty awful views about the world, which rubbed off into his son. Lucius believed the Half-Blood and Muggle-born wizard were inferior to Pure-Blood, something he no doubt pushed into Draco. It's easy to forget that at one point, Draco actually wanted to be friends with Harry. Harry rejected his slightly aggressive offer of friendship, choosing two people Draco would never be friends instead. The poor but happy Ron Weasley 
and the muggle-born Hermione Granger. Their rivalry was set from this moment on, but it was made worse by Draco's parents' efforts to openly encourage it. When Harry became the youngest seeker on the Gryffindor Quidditch team in a century, Lucius bought the whole Slytherin team new brooms in return for Draco being made a seeker too. It's as if whatever Harry did, Lucius hoped that Draco could do better. But it's his attitude to others that really highlights Draco's cruelty. From his bullion of Neville to the nasty comments he threw at the Weasleys, calling Hermione a mudblood and getting back big senses to death, it's fair to say Draco is not a nice guy. And yet as J.K. Rowling reveals, there is some good inside him. As he matters, we start to see it. We started to understand Draco's true character when he was tasked with killing Dumbledore. The boy who usually carried himself with such arrogance began to unravel. Voldemort expects Draco to fail in his mission. Draco agrees anyway, not for glory, but because Voldemort has threatened him with death and because he wants to restore his family's standing. It's a hard, lonely task. Draco resists Snape's help, cries in the toilets and makes weak attempts on Dumbledore's life. In the end, although he acts as everyone expects him to, Voldemort thinks weakness not because of goodness stops Draco killing Dumbledore. But in the and Draco can't bring himself to commit murder. Not to forget the Malfoy Manor scene, the moment finally arrived when Draco had the chance to redeem himself. So many thoughts must have been racing through his mind. He knew all too well what would happen to Harry and his friends if they were handed over, yet his parents would be proud and grateful beyond measure. Draco was torn between loyalty to his family, fear of Voldemort, and worry for his former classmate. But instead of revealing that it was Harry, Draco denied, saying I don't know. Actions have consequences. Harry would lead to risk his own life to save Draco from the faint fire. Narcissa Malfoy would then lie to Voldemort, an extremely dangerous person to lie to, and spare Harry to hear that her son is alive. Thanks to all of this, Voldemort would be defeated, and peace would return to the wizarding world. Much of this can be traced back to the one decision in Malfoy manner Draco made. In crucial moments, Draco's unwillingness to commit unfaithful acts, killing Dumbledore, sending Harry to almost certain death, shows that although he's cruel and boastful, he isn't completely evil. He's also unhappy about great back appearance in Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, and visibly uncomfortable about the death of Professor Burbage. This moment proved Draco to be a stronger, braver, and more sympathetic character than most of people gave him credit for, and how terrifying the pressure of his Death Eater father had on him his entire life. Most importantly, it showed us the power of redemption and how we can all learn from our mistakes. That was all for today's video. If you enjoyed this one, please leave a like on it. Also feel free to comment down below your thoughts and ideas. Until next time, I'll see you guys soon.